Hi, I'm Julie Bayfan Balzer, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with the fonts on your computer using Canvas Workspace for your PC. I'm in Canvas Workspace for my PC. I'm going to click on the text button. That will make this menu in the properties panel on the right side come alive, especially when it comes to text. Now, if I click on this menu here where you can see the word Antique Oakland, what I'll find is a bunch of different fonts. The most exciting thing is right after this line, you're gonna see all the fonts that are actually on your PC. So you may not see the same list that I have because these are the fonts that are on my PC. But if you, whatever TTF fonts that you have can now be read. So if I want to pick on this nice cursive one, I can click that. Then when I click inside the mat area, I can now type anything that I want. How about hello? Which you can see right there in that font. Now, one thing that I want you to notice about the font, and let's zoom in so that you can really see what's happening here. When you look at this, can you see that these are, these are not welded together? You know, there's a line here, they're separate pieces. So that's one thing to know about your fonts is they're not necessarily designed for cutting. So you may have to make a couple alterations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna go ahead to the edit menu and I'm gonna choose process overlap and I'm gonna choose weld. And notice how those lines disappeared. So now this is ready to cut. Now there are a couple other things that might be problematic, which is this is very close and not attached in this area. And again, over in the O as well. So that might be something that you wanna manually go in and mess around with, but I like it. I think it looks good. Now, if you want to see more clearly what it's gonna look like, one of the ways that I like to edit it is go ahead into fill color and you can pick whatever color you want and hit okay. And then I'm actually gonna get rid of the line by just clicking in the one that has the um, little squares, looks like a checkerboard, it's actually transparent and you say okay. So now it's just here. So now I can more clearly see the gap that's in the O and the gap that's in the E, which I think is perfectly attractive. And certainly if you were drawing this, you wouldn't even have to think about it if it was just a drawing line. Instead, it's a cut line. The other thing I want you to notice about this is that the font menu has gone away now. And that's because by welding this, we it is no longer editable. If I hadn't welded it, I could have changed the way that I edited it. But let's go ahead and cut this out. So I'm gonna go up to File. And I'm going to say transfer FCM file. So now it's ready to go. I'm just going to head over to the scan and cut and cut it out. From the home screen, I'm going to choose pattern and the wireless button. There is my hello. You can see I've already scanned in my paper. So I'm simply going to move the hello into the correct area. And I'm going to say, OK, cut and start. Now that it's done cutting, let's take a peek at how that turned out. It looks fantastic. And all those little gaps are not a problem at all. You can see how easy it is now to work with all the fonts that you own to make whatever it is that you like. Now that we've cut that out, I wanna show you a couple of other things you can do with fonts. So again, I'm gonna click on text and I can go ahead now and choose my font. type in the words that I want. And again, as indicated, you can adjust the fill color, the line color, all of those things. You simply click onto the select tool so that you can see the line changes to blue. So we're gonna adjust the fill color. Okay. And get rid of the line color. I just find it easier to see things this way. Now, 
The line width is going to refer to that line on the outside that we just got rid of. And you obviously can change that, but since we have no line, you're not going to see any difference. However, if now that I've changed it to four point, if I change the line color, let's say to that, now you can see that sort of dark color around there. Um, you can also change the dash pattern. So could be dashes just like that. Could be larger dashes just like that. I'm not sure why you'd want to do it around text, but maybe you might have a reason for wanting to do that. Now the next thing is you can see there's a style thing here. You can change the style of the font. Regular, oblique, which is another word for italic, bold, and then obviously bold oblique is an italic bold. Very cool. Now, character spacing, what does that refer to? Well, take a look at what happens to the text. If I bring it up, the letters separate, which is something you definitely might want, especially if you're creating a stencil or something like that with text. However, if you had some text that seemed like it was too far away, you can also bring it down and squish it up. Okay, and that can create something else entirely different that I think is really cool. That would be great for a monogram or anything like that. The other thing that you can do so if you have a line of text, and let's zoom out slightly like so, and you want to add a second line. You can't hit return to add a second line, but what you can do is simply add another line of text. And then by using the select tool, I can decide where I want to place it. Here, centered, over to the right, whatever it is that I want. And certainly I could use the alignment tools. So I can go up to edit and align and say align right. And now I know that these two are perfectly aligned on the right side. I can also say edit align left. And now they're perfectly aligned on the left, whatever it is that I want. I can also, if I want, resize these and I can make both of them at the same time. So it's like it's one big line of text differently sized. If you don't want to use the top menu options, you can also, in the right on the properties panel, click on this second option, which is called edit. That's going to bring up more of a visual guide to the entire editing menu. And at this point now, I can flip the text. Let's say I want it to be backwards because I'm doing something where it has to be backwards. And again, I can change the alignment. Okay, I can even weld things. I can add an offset if I want, which is going to basically add a border around everything, which you'll be able to see. There you go. And you can customize that as well. But this is really the key is using these panels and all of these choices to get the look that you want. As soon as I want to head back to fonts, all I need to do is click on the brush for properties. And there you go. You can see my full options have come up. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget about the Scanning Cut website at scanningcut.com. Mm -hmm.